Just wrapping up a long day at the main nursery and thought before I headed home that it might be nice to spend a few minutes while before the sun fades completely to take a walk around with you folks and do a late fall update. Talk a little bit about the shipping that we're into, local pickups, things like that around the nursery, but also just show how things are growing. So stick with us. First thing I want to mention is appreciating your patience if you've placed an order with us this fall. Some of you have already received plants from us. We're going as fast as we can. We're trying to send them to the coldest places first. One note that I would mention here, if you're watching this video and you're in a cold climate and you would rather us not ship you plants this fall, but rather in the spring, send me an email. It's Sean, S-E-A-N, at ediblacres.org. We'd be glad to put you on pause until the spring. And for those of you that ordered that are local to us, give me a shout as well. Let's make an arrangement and get these plants in your hands. My wonderful friend Juan was helping today with digging up yet another full heaping truckload of plant material to bring back to where Sasha and I live. Uh, it's 18 miles away. It's a bummer to have to drive back and forth, but it's the reality that we have for now. And so we've been emptying out some of these air prune boxes, getting chestnuts and hazelnuts, pawpaws and persimmons ready to go. The plants look great considering how stressful and dry a summer it was. We're finally getting some rains now. The soil is starting to take on some real moisture. We took a little bit of time in the last week or so, planted out some beds to garlic. These are some beds of all elephant garlic, hoping that next fall we'll be able to offer that up. The compost that we brought out here was loaded with seeds that I wish the chickens had eaten this. This is compost from the chicken system, but we can pull them at some point and bring them back to them. But those ladies need to be eating a little more thoroughly so we don't have to weed as much. But underneath all that rich compost, all that hay, and all those lovely grassy weeds are some elephant garlics that are going to sprout in the spring. That's going to be a fun patch to manage. <laughs> a lot of the beds that were in garlic this summer, as we lifted those beds and harvested the garlic, we set them to different cover crops. And it's amazing that any of them are here after how little water they received. But some of the real winners, this, these are black Spanish round radish that were sown the day the garlic was harvested from this bed. Well, what the heck, let's pull that one out. It's a little early. I think it could stand to use a good frost ooh, or two. But even with no real rain, got a bunch of these beauties throughout some of these beds. It's a lot of food for the winter and whatever we don't get, well, first of all, the deer are enjoying the tops, good for them. It's not really impacting the root size all that much, having some nibbles. Um, so we're gonna go through after we get some good frosts, lift these beds of all these root crops, maybe donate some, share some, get a bunch in the root cellar and figure out, are we either planting this out to garlic or some sort of fall nursery crop or just getting cover on it. But it's kind of nice to see how resilient some of these plants can be. It's a whole other bed of black Spanish round radish there. You can see just from how much stress they went through from all that lack of water, a lot of them bolted, which will make for much smaller roots for us, but a late October browse for bees, which is pretty special. The mustards and the radishes in here. And you can see a bed here, which was lifted Oh, two, three weeks ago, pretty measly potato harvest, but at least there were some in there and now it's set to garlic. So potatoes as the first crop, when the potatoes are lifted and harvested, uh, set to garlic. And then once the garlic is out next summer, growing a rich root dominant cover crop, and then it's ready for anything. These beds will be beautiful next year had enough rains that some of the water features we worked on so hard this summer are beginning to creep in a little bit of water. This is the second irrigation pond that we worked on, oh, roughly eight to 10,000 gallon potential. You hear that radish squeaking in the background, <laughs> carrying it around with me. A um, little bit of water in the bottom. We're going to need to get a lot of clay in there. We're still going to skip the pond liner idea for now and see if we can't redirect some surface flow into this once we have that, if we get a flash rain, and then work on solar panels and pumps to fill 
that cistern. You can see we built some extra pads here. Uh, bought six 300 gallon IBC totes recently. So we're bulking up on storage so that next summer there should be no lulls in watering and we should be able to get crops through another dry year if need be. Wonderful friend got me a couple many truckloads of round bales that we've been bringing out and so now that there's rain coming through to soak through that hay some of these beds are doing beautifully this whole area in here was seeded to about a thousand per, uh, pawpaw seeds we've got another three to four three to five thousand seeds we'll sow out in the spring so hopefully next fall we'll just be dripping with pawpaws to offer folks can see next year's good king henry nursery bed here sown right after the garlic, collected enough seed to be able to sow super thickly. So we'll thin that out. Maybe in the spring we'll dig some of these out and we'll harvest lots of greens for us. And next fall have some beautiful Good King Henry ready for you. Been really enjoying the autumn olives this fall. So a nice thicket out here of some seedlings we dug up underneath some really nice cultivar parents. And yeah, we planted these. And yeah, I know some people hate autumn olive. That's fine. We love them. And seeing some of these air prune beds, looks like chipmunks or birds are also enjoying them. So we'll keep an eye out for lots of autumn olive seedlings in the spring. Although I'm seeing that whoever's enjoying these is also enjoying the seed just like we do. So, so far, maybe minimal seed pressure, but we'll keep an eye on it and we'll enjoy learning as we go. But would I complain if there were more of these just delightful, rich, beautiful red fruits all through the landscape? I would not. Nice to see some of these parsnip beds. These were sown the day we harvested garlic. One thing for sure is we should have thinned this way, way earlier on. Uh, but it's better to have, well, it's considered a cover crop for us. We wanted to make sure the soil was protected. I think the parsnips in here will end up being on the smaller side because we never thinned them, but we'll take the ones that are big, we'll leave the smaller ones for the mice and the voles or whoever else might want them for the winter or let them break down in the soil. That's some really lovely cover to protect the soil, drill down and decompact and give us some nice winter food as well. Thanks, parsnips. Tons of deer damage in this bed. I'm not sure what the deal was. I guess the soil fertility was nice and high and so maybe the deer were extra interested in the foliage here. But you can see some daikons. Same picture. Oh my god, deer brows. Well, whatever. There's still a huge daikon. That's about half of it. I'm sure more than half goes down into the earth there. And this whole bed just filled with these heavily browsed and yet incredibly massive, beautiful daikons. We had low germination, but that ends up translating to not needing to thin them and actually getting some that are really wonderful. We're gonna be getting some freezing temperatures and some snow this weekend, and we'll keep an eye on these. We don't wanna get them down into the teens, Fahrenheit-wise, but a couple nights in the mid to upper 20s is probably gonna really sweeten them up. And so we'll wait for that and then go for it. I gotta finish getting these milky oats, another cover crop, those harvested for Sasha so she can dry them for tea this winter. They're getting into the perfect milky stage. Last but not least, I thought it'd be nice to take a wander with folks. Those of you that watch the channel closely are very aware of the big, the major project of this summer, which is working on a roughly 50 foot diameter hand dug pond and kind of tapped out um, a few weeks ago. I just got one side done. We'll come back to that. Nice side note here, red Russian kale doing a great job as a cover crop. This is so nice eating shade grown kale under a canopy of Scots pines. There's more uh, purple top turnips and then more red Russian kale. That I will definitely do again. Midsummer sowing of kale under a forested canopy so they could get super sweet and be nice in the fall. But anyway, let me put this radish down. <laughs> we'll take a look at the pond. This side is the side that needs a huge amount of work next year many hundreds of wheelbarrows left of material to leave. And on this side, we got a little bit of water holding. So the question is how well does the water hold? That's about a foot deep right there. A lot of clay content. And we'll watch that water line, see if it drops out very quickly. 
Um, I've got all this clay banked on the side so we can add that in and try to help seal the pond a bit. But for now, I'm comfortable just letting it do its thing, watch and learn and make adjustments. Uh, we're coming into the time of year where pretty much historically it just gets wetter from here through the winter and into the spring. So the main task is to make sure all of our water cisterns that are up on these soil berms are ready. They're ready to hold water. We've got pumps and all that lined up so that as soon as we get into spring thaw, we can completely have those filled to overflowing. And then we can watch this water body, see how it responds to summer and all that, and see if we can help it evolve into something that holds water nicely. So beautiful to see this funky image. See if you can pause here and write in the comments what you think is going on. These are all little tufts of pine needles. And what I'm pretty sure is happening is that each one of these piles is where a hole goes down into the earth and an earthworm has been every day coming up, chewing a little bit and bringing it down into their burrow. All these little packed food storage systems. Normally we food store food down in the earth. I guess the earthworms store the food right above their home. It's really cool to see. I've, I could never have thought to design something as interesting as this. So the earthworms are drawing huge amounts of organic matter back into the soil now that we've excavated and loosened this. I don't know if that'll be positive or negative as far as the water holding capacity, but boy, I'm pleased to see it. It's a really cool random surprise. Bunch more nursery stock to lift when the time is right. It's a backup crop of sea kale and mioga ginger. Looking forward to doing a video pretty soon on how we're propagating and planting and working with Mioga and sharing notes about what we've learned so far. And just more and more of these cover crops that just barely held on all summer, barely, barely. Now that we're finally getting rains, they can size up, they'll get some freezes into them so they can sweeten up and we'll take what we can and what we need. We'll leave a whole lot for the wild friends to enjoy. Hopefully deer get to eat lots of these tops and voles get to eat lots of the bottoms and bring all that nutrient and move it through the soil. Whole big old complex system. We are just one member of a big crazy community out here growing things.